Explorers Association is thankful to partner with founding Gold Level partner, BlueNet, to present retail design for today's generational market, featuring Jackie Lacey, AIFD. Jackie brings his unique skills from years as a retailer and event florist, multiple leadership roles in industry associations, and tons of experience teaching florists all across the country to us today. Please help me welcome the brilliant Jackie Lacey. So much for allowing me to be with you. I appreciate you sharing your time. I do want to quickly say thank you very much to two people that I could not have done this without. Can we give them a round? <laughs> and Robin, sitting here in the front row, also with big help because it does take a village for us to put it together. And of course, I could not be here without the support of BloomNet and Floriology and Texas State. I am super happy to be here because Texas is like a second home to me. I actually used to live in Austin and lived here for several years. So I feel like I get to come home and share some of the things that we've learned. And I have not been on the main stage for Texas State, and I think we decided it was 10 or 12 years. Wow. I've done a lot of education here with uh, you guys, but not on uh, main stage. So this is fun for me. This is the easy part. Because everyone will tell you, I can talk to the wall about a banana. So this part I've got. But I do want to share a little bit of information that I think that's super important right now. For the first time, we are dealing with five generations that have money to spend. We want to appeal to each of them. If you have a niche that you sell to a certain generation for a specific reason, that's great. However, you're leaving money on the table by not appealing to the other generations. But we want to make sure that we're working smarter and not harder because it's already hard enough to be in this industry, right? We got in the industry because we love working with flowers. We love the beauty of flowers and everything that surrounds that. But generally, we're not very good at paperwork. We hate having to do numbers. Numbers are hard because we want to just work with the flowers and see those smiles and share everything. So knowing the generational breakdown is incredibly important. And I know that we've talked about it for several years. It was starting just before all of those things that we all went through with the pandemic to be recognized and even more defined. So we know a little bit more today than we did yesterday as far as how not only does the breakup in age group make a difference, but it also makes a difference with what they're looking for, how they purchase, where they purchase, and the amount that they're willing to spend. We've just moved out of the baby boomers being the largest buying group into the millennials being the largest buying group. And remember, with millennials, you've got two different groups because you've got the younger and the older millennials. As the millennials advance in age, they start to pick up some of the baby boomer trends, such as they finally decide they have made it through owning a plant and the plant survived. Let's maybe try a pet. Then they bought the dog or the cat, and it survived. So maybe the next thing is we'll try children. We're still hoping for that to go well. But they've moved through all of that. Now they want to purchase a home and have a nice car. They start at the beginning of that, coming out of college and wanting the quarter office with a title. And I'm not making fun saying they've worked very hard, where we had to work to get to that point. They're starting with the educational background, and that's where the, that generation wants to start, because they've gone through all of this. So knowing how to appeal to them and what their buying habits are is incredibly important. With the baby boomers, we've got the, the breakdown there in age. They prefer to buy in the store 
because we still want that connection. We will research the store before we go to buy it, but we still want that experience of actually being in the store. We get to relate to the brands that we're really familiar and we like, and we are starting to buy online. Even myself, most of my purchases today are online. With the Gen X buying habits, they like deals in store brands. They're looking for, um, they do their research before they make the purchase, and they like bargain shopping online, and they will splurge post-pandemic. They're willing to spend the money. With the Gen Y and the Millennials, and you've got the two breakdowns there, that they want convenience. I was sharing with the hands-on class that I did yesterday. I asked a co-worker for something from a headache, and I received a coupon and directions to the closest CVS. <laughs> <laughs> They're not going to share their medications because they've already paid for them. They're mine. Go get your own. And here, take a coupon. <laughs> they prefer brands that offer that unique experience. They're still looking for an experience, not just a purchase, not just to buy something. What am I going to get out of it? And what am I going to retain and enjoy? They expect great customer service and they share it socially because this is now word of mouth. This is an incredible tool and a vicious weapon, depending which hand it's in. So we have to appeal and be comfortable socially <laughs> so that we can connect with each of those generations as well. And then as we look at the Gen Z or Gen A, they're a little confused. Are we at the end or are we at the beginning? They um, are digital natives. They do not know a time without remotes, without the computer, without a, a push button phone. I can imagine, I think it'd be kind of funny to hand them a rotary dial phone. <laughs> see what you, did. you know, how do you experience that? They must have an on, you must have an online presence or they are not going to connect with you. And they are technologically driven. Each generation wants to be marketed to differently as well. So you have to know which generation you want to sell something to, then market in that way. And it all comes back to socially being able to connect. Is that going to be on Facebook? Is that going to be on Instagram? Or is that going to be on Twitter? And how are you going to connect with them there? Remember, you've got just a few seconds to grab their attention. So whatever you're doing, has to connect right away to make them want to stay and watch. So you have to be engaging from the very beginning. And that's hard, hard for especially older people. We tend to want to stay back here. We've done this, we're tired. Now we're having to get up and we're having to smile and they want, to, they want me to act stupid. I've been taught my entire life not to do that. <laughs> and then now, especially at work, they're like, can you just act crazy? Well, crazy for me is wearing this wrinkled shirt. <laughs> living on the edge. <laughs> so you have to see what market you're reaching for and how you can connect to them. But better yet, how do I connect to all of them? Because that's what's going to keep more money in your pocket. And that's what we want to look at today. A couple of guides that I want to share with you that, I, that we have found incredibly valuable and still are, even though they're a few years old. I happen to also be on the Board of Trustees for AFE, the American uh, Floral Endowment, and they do great studies in combination with the Floral Marketing Fund to provide studies that we can really utilize. You can go there, you have access to it, please check out AFE or the Floral Marketing Fund and look at these studies because they will tell you how they look for directions in the mobile connections, the convenience influences purchases. If you make a purchase convenient, they may be more apt to stop by the local retail flower shop rather than going to a big box if it's convenient. If you're still doing that curbside service, which I suggest that you still incorporate that if they want it, Call me up, place your order. A lot of people are putting cameras in their cooler. Pick out your flowers. We'll bring it out to the car. Make it as convenient as possible, and you just join another generation. 
It's not that they're not wanting to get out of the car. Chances are they've got a baby in the car. They're on their way somewhere else. Last minute, because they do tend to be a little last minute in making some of the decisions, they want to pick up a bouquet on the way to dinner somewhere else. So make sure that you look for these. And the other one is, is shopping with your eyes. People shop immediately and make decisions visually, whether they like something, whether they're going to purchase it or not. That has to be true with what you're doing as well. So if you just do one thing, you appeal to that one generation, the others are going to recognize that when they see, and they'll move right on. So if you're doing something in all white that's very traditional, try also offering it in red, blue, and yellow with a little bit more of a contemporary look side by side, because then you're getting the attention of a larger market. And that's what will really help increase your sales. Know what is trending, and houseplants, like I said, they move towards um, houseplants, especially during the pandemic. The study that came out in 21 said that they didn't buy just one plant, they bought on average five to six plants. So you want to be able to sell them new clones for those what pots do you have? What wooden containers? What do you have that's sustainable? What do you have that you can have them come into your shop rather than going to a big box to replace that? Have a plant hospital so that they come to you for that information rather than going to a nursery. You want to be their one-stop shop for everything gifting. Whether it comes to flowers or plants, be there for them. Doesn't cost you much to provide that in your shop, but the return is going to pay off. It may take you a while to get there. If you don't do something one time and it works, how many times have you woven lily grass and the first time it was perfect? If you did, please let me know. I want to come to your educational training because I know it took me a while to get that down. And a lot of the techniques that are up here, it took a while to perfect. Same thing with this, if you're going to sell something new, new, move something new into the market. The various types of plants that people do look and how they buy them is very specific. So that information is also very helpful in knowing how that breaks down. And again, those are provided by the American Floral Endowment and the Floral Marketing Research Council. When it comes to generational design, it's kind of visually obvious the difference when we start looking, but one thing that the study did show is that most consumers do not have a knowledge of principles and elements. We are taught to worry about it. We are taught to make our design better by using it, but most consumers don't know what those things are. They don't understand what lying is. But if we describe it to them, then we they oh yeah, 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 I do like that. If they're asked before, nine times out of 10, they may say, I'm not quite sure that line really matters. But if you're looking for something tall, and I know we're in Texas, they want it big, they want it wide, and they want it for $35. Mm -hmm. I know, it's the same in Florida too, no matter where you go. So how do I make something taller? How do I make it wider and still use fewer flowers? That's where our artistry has to come into play. Changing up your design will also help appeal to the various generations. Look for things that will coordinate with the decor colors. And we found that where Pantone is going in those broader, bolder colors, when it comes to their homes, people tend to be a little bit more soothing. They want something that kind of um, is restful, peaceful. You don't see a lot of people painting their rooms in the new magenta color, but they will accessorize in a room that is painted in guacamole or olive spring with those colors because those colors are soothing. You can update the look by changing the accessory colors, and that's where Pantone comes in. But most of the home decor is going to be those brown tones, those earth tones that are very adaptable and can be changed easily by changing the curtains, the rugs, and the pillows, and not have, having to completely redecorate your home. For wedding as an events, 
especially for 23, we saw color coming back into play. And I was just talking to someone back in the back. If you've studied color very much, and I studied it for, for a number of years, looking back historically, when we're in a time of unrest, we tend to go to white, beiges, blush, and we just went through that, right? We were, weren't we unrestful just recently? <coughs> Incredibly unrestful. And everything went to those blush tones. You couldn't buy a quicksand rose for anything less than what a calla lily cost. Mm -hmm. Then, because things continued to change, it went to white. And everything white was outrageously expensive, super on demand. All the events were coming back because we were unrest. We were in a, a time of unrest. We didn't really know what was going on. Are we changing? Are we getting out of this? Are we not? What's going on and what's going on around the world just made things even that much worse. One thing I don't hear people talking about during the pandemic was all of the things, the positive things that did happen. <coughs> we focus on the negative. But I, we live in Jacksonville, and I have never seen so many buildings that have been painted and renovated and spruced up my neighbors finally came in and begged me to come back to work because they couldn't keep up with what I was doing. It was like, will you please just start traveling again? <laughs> my wife is going to kill me if I don't keep doing whatever you do. Everything was spruced up and looks good and looks nice and looks fresh. Let's concentrate on that now as we begin to move into this new period of what do we do now. For next year, the wedding and the mint colors are going to see gold, hot pink, and green. And those colors up there is just what I was limited to. That's not the hot pink color that you're going to see next, next year. It will be a true hot pink because it coordinates with that magenta. Works really well with berry peri because you've got the purples and the magentas and the hot pinks all play well together. The gold and the green are those soothing tones that can bring in still that search for organic and sustainability because we will continue to see sustainability continue to rise and become more and more important as we move forward. So this was a little bit of information and then right down at the bottom, apricot crush, we're already starting to see it come onto the market. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like a creamy orange tone that's creeping in and we, for the first time ever in the back room, we had a plethora of pincushion protein that was in a beautiful orange tone, but not super dark orange. It was more of a pale orange that would have lend itself very well for that. So begin to look for that as we move towards 24, and we see apricot crush start to take on. And then know your market and your message, because that book is what will get you through as we begin to move towards what's next. Hopefully that information will help you take a little bit away with you and be a little stronger when you go back. Looking at design, when I wanted to come up with this concept on what to do, everyone loves a great, low, compact, you know, um, tight piece that is functional. This works with what they call a king's table or a knight's table, a family table, something long and low in a sustainable container because wood is very sustainable, but accenting it with that lily grass. I love grass. I'm so glad the world is embracing grass now, and I am talking about lily grass. <laughs> because it adds so much without adding a lot of cost. Because look what happens when we take that out. It just flattens out. So building in a little depth with a little bit of lily grass is a great way to add in something that's appealing to the next generation. And then the rustic wire is a great way to bring in that rustic look. So you could use it on there for that generation, take it off for those that are looking for something that's a bit more in traditional in style, but elongating something. I do this especially when I send things to the funeral home. I do everything horizontal because I don't want them sending ugly things in front of my flowers. There you go. So if it's this wide, everything has to be low or off to the side. Because when someone orders sympathy flowers, the first thing they do when they get there, I'm very sorry for your loss, where's my flowers? 
that's where they look. I want them to look across the room and know that my stuff is there. And then looking at other alternatives for containers, I came up with, with this using the wreath, and you can use any type. We had ordered specifically moss wreaths. Um, they sent us only the, the Spanish moss ones, not a, a grapevine wreath that was covered with moss. So we had to adapt. And then using the skewers, and Donald Jim and several people I know have done this, this is not something that's new, which is how do we push it into what we're doing on an everyday basis. Have someone put these together for you, have them ready. It's not something that you're gonna sit down and do that all at one time for each design. Do it and have it ready at the beginning of the week. How many do you think you might possibly use? Because these could also be easily added in here to bring that up and to get some of the products out of the container and up top to have a whole different look. So combining these is a great way to meet that next market with what you're looking for. A little bit of a U-glue strip on the tube before you put the uh, paper covered wire on there, the bind wire, will help it stick and makes it a little easier to do. Just twist your wire as you start to close it off, squirt the water in there, use flowers that you know will hold up with a small water source and remind the client that they're going to need to refill those as they go through. I thought using the Reef concept was a great way to, how do we move that into other design? And doing something like this is still, I think if you sent this to a baby boomer, I'm still going to appreciate this. This is not so different that it's something I don't like the style. In fact, when, we start, when I started to put this in the back, I had a couple of people that looked and like, mm, I'm not so sure I like that, how that's going, and, uh, until when I got it finished. Incorporating the plants, bring in that generation because they have something to keep afterwards, and you want to play that up. You're getting an extra gift in this particular design. Nodding the lily grass gives it a different look so that it's not just in there to add in the depth and texture. And then using those new tones, that beautiful lavender rose that's got that dusty gray color combined with the greens helps tie in the Spanish moss. If this were green, that much better. It's going to go even to a whole other uh, group of people. So use things thoughtfully. I love using so loud, but I like using it in pieces like this so that it's not me accenting the greenery or the foliage with the flowers and I'm accenting the flowers with the foliage. Foliage costs as much as the flowers do there. So you have to use it thoughtfully. Don't use too much. And then for a different option, rather than just doing something flat on the table like this, come up with a way that you can incorporate the design and make it different. This could easily be um, put on a hanger and hung on the door. It can be put on a shelf in the living room so that you're looking at it this way, viewing it like this rather than just like this because this gets you one style, this gets you a whole different style, and you can do so many different things by just adding a couple of big glues in there, change it out very easily, doesn't take a lot of product, but makes a lot of great dynamics and you want to pull it in, you want to see what's in there. And this is one of my favorite Austrian areas of seeing it grow on the market. It's that double blue Austro. So the floral part of it is just beautiful. It has so much dynamics. It's all, like it's all the petals are together rather on various pieces so that it holds up well. And then to be challenging and different, we started with this concept and Jessica and Lisa helped me be able to incorporate it. That's the three wreaths covered, each of them covered in a different medium and just linked together. And then now we start to layer it in so that you've got various products that are added in, pulling up some height so that it's this big. And that's what the consumer is going to say. The flowers are this big because tall means it's more expensive. So the more things that you can add in there, 
And if you happen to get an Italian rescus that the foliage doesn't look all that great, the skeleton is a perfect add-in that, again, adds in texture. It makes something that's different. And people want, even the designers back there that knew what it was, they were like, what is that? So don't limit yourself from the products that you how do I manipulate that product to go from one generation to the other? Because today's generation are going to see something like that and go, that's really cool. I love that dead branches. <laughs> yeah, me some more dead branches. But they call up now. I used to when I first had my flower shop for the call up, and the first thing out of their mouth was, I don't want carnation, I don't want any baby's breath, and no leather. Today they call up and do, can you put some of those sticks in there? Yeah. Or do you have any kind of pods that you can pop in there? So look for those things that you can easily add in and begin to appeal to that next generation. But remember, it's going to take, look at this great way that I can use Italian Ruscos today. We actually manipulated the foliage, because remember you want to present in a professional way manipulated the foliage by tailoring the leaves off of the skeleton branch to add it into that beautiful bud vase. Simple bud vase with just a few flowers. We're featuring this today, so be sure and stop by and check this out. Let me show you what we can do in other colors. Easy to jump on there and let them know what you're doing and what's going on. And I cannot say enough about color because that's why this is right in the center. Hopefully you notice that's the first thing your eye is going to see. You close your eyes and then open them. You sh this should be the focal area. And specifically, we looked at designing in a monochromatic fashion. All of the flowers are tints and tones of the same hue in the container, pulling off of the blue into the various shades of blue is a great way to appeal to that. But we can also easily mix that all together. And those are the things that you want to make sure that you're staying on top of so that you can begin to take that and now manipulate it in a different way without having to reinvent the wheel. I know that what this price point is. I know what this price point is. I know what this price point is. You don't have to start over. Now how can I make that a little different? Make it more traditional instead of so tall. Maybe with the pin cushions, you sink those down in and pull your sunflowers up. Make it roundy moundy, but it's still the same recipe. It's still the same number of stems. So you know what your costs are, you know where your profit margin is. Take that and you can also accent it into a lower design like we did in the center and look for ways to use your garment because you paid for that too. You paid for the stem, you paid for the bloom, you paid for the foliage, and this is wadded up with a little bit of bouillon. I call them trash beans, <laughs> because they're easy to incorporate. They add just more texture. It's something that's cool and different. It's something that you can create again, spritz it down, have it available to put in a design in the next few days. But monochromatic is still really strong because people gravitate to the colors that they love and that they appreciate. And that's why we did this. And why did today's generation decide that peonies were all of a sudden an inexpensive flower? <laughs> <laughs> I had a bride's family that came in, and the dad was like, can you just, just ballpark it? I don't ballpark, I need to sit down with your dog. No, just tell me what you think it's going to be. It's really going to depend on what they want. Can you just give me a guess? I really don't want to do that. I'm super uncomfortable. Pressing me, pressing me, pressing me to give. I finally gave in just to get them out of the shop. She came in. Yes, she wanted something simple, like 15 or 20 peonies in a <laughs> container. It was her idea of simple, not three. Three. Or 20. I don't have to do the math for you. So when he got the estimate, he's like, are you, what are you trying to do? Screaming at the top of his lungs. No, you forced me into a situation that I told you I needed to do more, I needed more information from you. 
Suddenly, peonies, calla lilies, anemones, all of the flowers that we know have always been there and have been a big part of events and weddings are suddenly new and different, and everyone wants them. So how do you incorporate them? Make sure that you're buying in bulk. Make sure that you know when the season is. Work with your wholesaler or the, the grower that you're buying them from so that you know what you can sort of estimate and do that. Estimate on what the cost is gonna be on a consistent basis because it's gonna be lower when they're very plentiful. It's going to be higher when it's off season. Take the prices and do an average price and charge that consistently and you will find you don't make your consumers angry because they don't feel like you're trying to just jab them. You're just trying to scout. It's always us. We're the, right the florist. We're the bad guys. I'm a florist. I'm not a hit man. I don't decide this morning I'm going to get them to pay me $24 by charging more. We are at the mercy of the market. Make sure that you use that as an educational basis to talk about it and explain to them. And then don't forget about contrast because contrast is a great way to create dynamics and to bring something different in by doing those contrasting colors between the container and the floral product or incorporating them together so that you see that as a color palette. Doesn't that make a great photograph? Again, you're going to jump on socially and talk about the fact that the colors contrast, they make each other stronger, they show up deeper, they allow us to see both the colors that we love and what works well with it and against it, and makes them seem to be more expensive. Why do you put more thought into that? Because they're going to support each other. And then when it comes to marketing, when you want to start to put those colors together, Look at, everything doesn't have to just be tall, because being wide and horizontal can also really help. By taking that branch, instead of doing something vertically, do it in a horizontal manner. And these were put in uh, super early yesterday. But one thing I found with colored hydrangeas especially, just before I put them into the design, I saturate the heads. Stick them in a bucket of fresh water, make sure that you're really getting them saturated. Because remember, hydrangea drink through the blooms and through the stems. So you aren't even feeding them through the stem for a couple of days. Now go to the bloom and make sure that it's heavily saturated. You can also mist it with water or an anti-transparent as well will help. But these held up super well and the, the workroom back there starting to get a little warm. And again, everything doesn't have to be at the same level. Creating that depth and interest into the design makes you want to see what's down here. There's only about a quarter of one piece of seeded eucalyptus in foliage in there, and then the natural foliage that I did not have to pay any additional for was left in there. Use contrast to sell color and make it work for you. Utility containers can easily become a nice base. This is um, Smith's Oasis, and uh, a great container to use. The Matco has some great standard colors, white, gray, blacks, are really popular because then they go with whatever color you might be using. So look at what you can purchase that will adapt to any holiday, any season that you need to use it. And then come up with different ways to market. This was actually, a container was shipped to us, to the Matco warehouse in this, to protect it from breaking. And then when I saw this, I was like, don't you throw that away. Because that can easily become a marketing tool. And just use an everyday container. And add it in to create a whole different look to take that to a different level. And then you jump on social and you talk about um, have, if you've got that crate at home, don't forget it can make a great backdrop. You can incorporate it into something else. Recycling, repurposing, and reusing is very sustainable. 
So make sure you come up with ways that you can suggest to do all of those so that the consumer can follow because they do care. And they do care about you buying local, supporting the small businesses that are in your area, the small farms, and most farms are super small. You know, 100 acres is really a big fresh flower farm. And that's really not that much when you think about it. So finding ways that you can help them merchandise and market their products is a great way for you to collaborate with your local farms and have both recycling, repurposing, reusing, and also supporting your local business and buying local. Incorporated that all in together. So that was my bit about color. Mm -hmm. I did not know that so many people dislike things like pothos, but pothos is one of those plants that you can basically spit on it and it's going to survive. <laughs> the more you abuse it, the more it seems to reach for you. And these tendrils will be halfway down the stage looking, and people will wind them around things and up over the curtains and around the room rather than training them to clip these off. Let it root, stick it back in the top, and you just make the plant fuller and fuller and fuller. It's really easy to do. But I dropped it down in that the, there's this really weird obsession with today's generation with face pots everywhere. <laughs> Napco started with making the little ladies and the little china earrings, you know, the kind of move the move container, those little heads, and they just sort of look really weird. Yeah. And now we've circled back around to that. But remember that everything is cyclical. It's going to come back around. And today's generation have discovered the peonies. They've discovered the, the dianthus and things like that that are coming. So don't forget that just a simple pot can really dress up that plant. And even if it's a common plant, and having something that's easy care is really important because today's consumer looks for the more exotic plant. They want that plant that's more challenging. Remember, they're trying to get through the birthing stage and then the survival stage. And those work well together because you've got that great skeleton on there. I love using this as a cut foliage to drop one stem down into a container. It makes a great statement. And it's a great way for you to use that. But you can also dress it up with things that are going to bring the level of that plant up using sponge mushrooms down there. And one of the best things about being here this week is that Lisa really perked me up when she said, I've got a present for you. And she went out to the park and she brought them all of these great bonsai skeletons. Isn't that cool? Oh, just wait. We have, we have something to show you. But I thought that this was a great way because this is so artistic. You could easily glue flowers to it or you could start to cover it up. But I like using things like this as an accessory to sit with something because that's just a plant box by itself. But adding in that bonsai, now it's a piece of art. So we're appealing to two different, maybe three different generations by adding that in. Incorporating your Phalaenopsis orchids because it's the number one selling plant. People love that the blooms will last, but they all, what do they do? Well, I, I watched a YouTube video. I put my ice cube in here. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Put ice on a tropical plant. Yeah, good job. Ice and tropics <laughs> don't generally go together. Teaching them and having it on your website, how to take care of it, is a great way for them to get more bang for their butt. And if those blooms will last for four or five months, which they should, what are they going to think in their heads? That flower shop knows what I'm talking about. Because they trained me how to take care of them. They now become, you now become their plant expert. And we can get all the information right on our phone or right online that we can be able to share. It. But don't hesitate to let those roots fall out there. Let that organic appeal start to come in because it's easy to add it into something like this. And this even has its own little bonsai skeleton that's tucked down in there. 
that can be used again and again. So we enjoyed this while it was alive. Now we're enjoying it again, and we're reusing, rebirthing it in a different way. And with the wood box being so popular, we're starting to see a lot of geometric shapes start to show up and to appear. And how do we take those then to the next level? We're still seeing people love all green foliage or all foliage designs because they can be incorporated very easily into that organic wedding or event, or you can easily add flowers into it. Remember, you don't want to start with this and then add flowers because what you're doing is accenting the foliage with the flowers unless that's the purpose. Because three stems of orchids in there, done. Three stems of lilies could easily take this to, to being a finished design. But if you're going to use the foliage, then really use it and let it make a statement by the way you position it and add that weight in there that gives it some depth and texture. We've got the Aspidistra shredded or tailored is the, the term down here by splitting it and then wrapping it around. And then now you're bringing your eye right up to the tip there. And what does the consumer say? It was this big. And we know all that product is going to hold up very well. And we're working in the back room with our friend. When we're working in the back room with our friends, Derek is back there. It is, you know, when you're back there with Tony and Mandy, Deborah Del Floor, all of these flower gods working around you, you get a little bit intimidated. But we also cannot wait for them to move off of their table so that we can steal all the products. <laughs> Whatever they didn't use now becomes ours. I didn't have that on my recover procurement, but look at it now. So when Tony stepped away from her table, I was like, I want those. I want those inferior so badly. Isn't that beautiful? And so simple. Just gathering a beautiful cluster like that makes a huge statement and I think would still appeal to those that like tropicals and those that don't really understand them. Because it's just a beautiful bouquet. Just bound together, very simple. You could put foliage in there, and I would recommend, but if you look, it's still a professional finish on the back back there. But I just I told them I want to be married. <laughs> <laughs> Have this for a bit. <laughs> and then trying to play off of the colors and do something that's a little bit different when it comes to roses allows us to update our holiday. And don't forget that men like flowers too, and even more importantly, florists like flowers. People don't send us flowers, they're like, I don't know what to send you. Put a flower in the milk container in the refrigerator with a note that says, I love you. <laughs> that means more to us because we appreciate the flower, we appreciate the sentiment, Add the two of them together, and we're back to what we do on a daily basis. Remember, we are the brokers of emotion. People send us their love to send to someone else. Their sorrow, their sympathy, their congratulations, their birthday wishes. All of those are given to us to send on. How can we do that in the colors that match today's trends? The style, just by adding a little bit of that rustic wire, I, it's a, a little trick that you take, wrap it around your finger, go a little bit of distance, it adds a lot of depth and texture in there, and you can twist that wire in so many different ways as you add up in there. And we're back to those quicksand roses that everyone loved, that color it works really well with the container, so it's a great way to incorporate all of that. I love these when I saw them and had to come up with something. And when I saw the ponytail palm, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with this one. And you'll have to, we'll set them actually down to the front 
at the end of the program so that you can look because all of this is, is being reused for another class. So it's not going to be part of the sale, but I want to give you enough time to be able to look at it as well. This is a tray that moves out so you can do just in the box and have the frame. So it could be a great support for weddings and events if you didn't want to use this, but I love that too just because, of course, we've got the succulents in there. Succulents are just like the mason jar. We're not going to get rid of it, but they're looking for succulents like this that have a little bit of color to add a little color into the design that you're incorporating it in. And then this dolphin succulent is starting to get really popular. It looks like it has a little relief. It looks like it's shaped like a dolphin. Trailly, it's long, it will support. And then a challenge, Lisa, when she was working on this one, and this one you have to see it up close to really appreciate that she made that Zen garden down in there so that you want to look in it as well as to look at it. It's kind of like a little trail looking through. She really did not like it when I said, no, you have to use the pulpus. <laughs> like it or not, put it in there. Because we want those common plants mixed with the exotic so that we appeal to both of those. But I'm from the South, and nothing is done until it is overdone. And this was the piece oh that I fell in love with. But to me, that is just so soothing. It's life. It is the immersion coming out. And when Jody, preacher of five, was talking about coming out, I had a little experience with that. So I wanted to look at what can we do with something like this to show that we can go beyond that. We're moving beyond what we've gone through. What we've gone through the last couple of years have taught us a lot. Now reach for the good in everything that you do. Yeah. And look for ways to take something that someone else may have thrown away. And Lisa said she kept this in the garage. Her husband kept moving it around. And it's like, why don't you throw this garbage away? I'm, I'm going to ship this home because I just cannot wait to see what I can do with the next and what can I take it to that next level. Add some maybe some copper wire to it to reinforce the branches. Mm -hmm. Continue to let that provide enjoyment with the plants that are still there. But hope you enjoy that. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, banks and Protea get a really bad rap because they can be kind of harsh, but doing them in a really simple way, this is simple but dressed up by adding it into a really nice container. This glass container is um, my own new one's from Syndicate that it, I think it's Syndicate. And um, super heavy, so it's going to be an add-on, a, a plus sale to the, the beginning, but then doing something exotic like this and adding in some depth and texture to it is a great way to push it to that next level. Without this, it becomes a little bit boring. It's like the lily grass. Another way, just add in one bunch of vegetables and those three pieces of banks here in that particular container. Because we're in Texas, and I know that cedar is a super prevalent foliage this year because it destroyed my allergies every time it came around. But when, when I saw it in my procurement was like I've got to use it but I brought something that I wanted to say <laughs> and this is a topiary that NAPCO has that's available for your garden it comes on spikes as you can see it's just screwing right down in there it's going to stop I'll probably jerk my hands off but I I just thought that that said Texas mm -hmm. in a way that 
I took a heart <laughs> by incorporating those two together. This was for the garden, and then we just took the um, pin cushion protea foliage, and you glued it on there and added a little bit of color. So think about being able to use things like that. Rent this for a Texas party or the centerpiece for a buffet or something like that. I think that that would be something that people would be drawn to. When it comes to themes, themes are super important within the generation and can appeal. And the same thing with this, going up as much as you can is important, but again, it's not done until it's overdone, and we have to have pampas grass and something. Uh. So adding just a touch of that to pull it in because the combination of dried and fresh is growing more and more. And then just some of those broad foliage. This actually, after Mandy went on stage, I went over to her section and <laughs> stole what I took from her to bring into here. And we know that the cedar would hold up really well and everything else is going to last just like it is. So a great buffet piece using advantage of selling the air and incorporating that to bring in easily at any kind of flowers that you wanted to in there, something that was native to a particular area that you might be hosting the party or working at. And then for our last section, we wanted to just look at doing similar recipes in different ways. What I thought I would do is I'm gonna talk about one. If you guys want to do, we'll walk around with the other. I love doing vertical and tall. So we took exactly the same number of flowers, same stems of flowers, and put it into a hand tie. And Jessica did this. Jessica, can you, can you take it out of the container and show them that it is truly just a hand tie bound together? It's going to appeal to another generation, make a great bouquet, but also can make a great centerpiece. A lot of people are, can design easier like this in the beginning until they get comfortable with using foam. Or, with the extreme um, popularity of no foam or foam alternatives, this is a way to meet that generational demand as well. Because you're not using foam in there. It's all the same flowers that's here, but you can see the two difference between the two designs and how that that's going to appeal to different people. Similar style here with a little low. So we have a container, and it's exactly the same number of stems in both of these. Just done in a little different way. To fill this one, I chopped up the bottoms of the hollow leaf and added depth and texture in there, and then tailored my daisies by removing the white petals and only using the centers that are in there. So both of those are the same products, just done in a little different way. And then a little small hand tie or something for your coffee table. <laughs> but because phalaenopsis orchids are so popular, but people find them very challenging, adding them in in the tubes is a great way to add it in on site when you get there. Make sure that they're not damaged and it takes it to that next level with the organ and you don't have any damage in that hand tie. And there is an hand tie bouquet as well. And that painted foliage is super popular. It makes great garlands and accents to decor. Comes in a lot of different colors. That's provided by Fern Trust. It's just a lovely little it's great. Mm -hmm. yeah. This next set is green and white because I love just the green and white work so well together. Tailoring or manipulating some of the cremones and they were falling apart on me anyway because you could just touch them and things started to dissipate. Uh, we pulled them out, used them in the hand tie there 
This one is actually done in foam, could easily be done in a curly willow grid or any other kind of grid that you wanted to use for that and done in a little more updated contemporary style so that it meets the demands of today's market. And just a little touch of that painted foliage goes a long way and this lasts really well. We all know that Plumosa just falls apart. But when it's painted, it can't. It can't go anywhere. So it's all glued together. So it holds up even better when you um, use it for that matter. And then we had a similar situation with our lilies. And we're seeing an a increased demand in um, composite flowers. And this was a lilium that Robin made and put together for me back there because they just kept falling off. I'm like, don't waste those. We have to use those in some way. But you're going to see composite flowers creep in, the, especially for events and weddings. And this was just done on a cardboard base, all hand glued, cold glued on there. And you want to make sure you do a professional finish on the back as well. Just a little bouillon for the handle there. And then for the base, I just took about half a bunch of lily grass. And I love tying it in knots because it's a great way to add texture into the container without it being a lot of money. And something that doesn't have to be foam. You want to walk around these two? And then looking at the way we use the lilies to appeal to other generations by adding in that touch of hot pink painted hydrangea is going to appeal to that Generation Z because they love things that are painted, the crazy daisies, the brighter the color, the more they like it. And just taking the flowers then and doing them a little bit, a little different style or appealing to your traditionalists or your baby boomers with that plethora of compact flowers that we started with is a great way to incorporate and embrace that generation as well. And then the last thing I'm gonna talk about is my boutonniere for today. <laughs> Just a really beautiful arrangement. This is tonal with those hot pinks and pale pinks, high-end flowers, low-end flowers. If you don't make this available, they don't they may not know that they could purchase this. When people would come into my shop, I would often get some go to the cooler that came in to pick it up, and I would go over and I would bring this out and set it down, and they go, oh no, you ordered the other one. <laughs> I will tell you that the majority of the time, they're like, but is that available? Because visually, you can see the difference. It's the same thing you've got to do on your phone. Educate the consumer. Let them know that things like this are available. You can push it to the limit, or you can make it adaptable. Right? And just a little bouquet for the little girl or to take home to take home to the wife because you, you know, men can be dogs sometimes. And they want to milk just need to go out of the doghouse. But also let them know that everything can be adapted in some way, and this is not something that you're bound to do, but adding and making sure that however you're wrapping that shows what's available, because it's five different smaller bouquets, so they can have whatever price point they want. You have to adapt, you have to be ready to Use your artistry to have a good career, to make really good options like this, but educate your consumer. Let them know, I can do anything you need, because they may not know that. Thank you so much for allowing me to share with you today.